Hi guys, welcome back to Needspire, a space where we build your concepts and you convert them into skills. This is Dr. Farkhanda Sophie and I am here to help you regarding your board and NEET exams and make the difficult topics easier for you. So continuing with the respiratory system series after my last video on lung volumes and capacities. Today I am here with an another video and the topic for today's video is oxygen dissociation curve. Now you guys also find this a bit difficult and tricky so I have decided to give you a brief idea about this oxygen dissociation curve also. First of all, let's talk about transport of oxygen. Okay. See, 97% of oxygen and 3% of oxygen. The 97% of oxygen is carried through RBCs, which contain what? Hemoglobin, which binds to the oxygen and transports it. And the remaining 3% is transported in a dissolved form in plasma. Okay. This is oxygen transport. And now, talking about the transport of carbon dioxide. See. 70% of carbon dioxide is carried as bicarbonates. That are the ions. Okay. Maximum. 25% of carbon dioxide are carried by RBCs. And the remaining... 5 to 7 percent by plasma in, in a dissolved form. Okay, so this is the transport of oxygen and transport of carbon dioxide. Now we have to talk about the transport of oxygen by the hemoglobin. Okay, now see here hemoglobin jo hai, that is present in the RBCs. This is a red blood cell. And it contains a pigment called hemoglobin. And the hemoglobin can carry four molecules of oxygen simultaneously. Okay. Four molecules of oxygen can be carried by hemoglobin. So the oxygen has to bind to the hemoglobin, form oxyhemoglobin, and then travel in the blood, go into the tissues. And then this hemoglobin and oxygen, they have to dissociate and the oxygen is given to the tissues. Okay. So this is the physiology behind it. Now, this curve, what is this curve? The binding of oxygen to the hemoglobin is dependent on some factors, okay? And the most important factor is the partial pressure of oxygen, okay? So, as the pressure of partial pressure of oxygen increases, the saturation of hemoglobin and with oxygen also increases. And this comes out to be a sigmoid curve, okay? What happens is, if we see, talk about this line, see, the partial pressure is increasing, and if we talk about this, the oxygen, HB saturation of oxygen is also increasing and the line comes out to be like something like this, which is a sigmoid curve. Why does it come out to be sigmoid? Because the first oxygen molecule that attaches to the hemoglobin increases the affinity of the hemoglobin to oxygen more and more. So, pehle, a bit of oxygen is attached, it increases the hemoglobin affinity. Then more of the oxygen is getting attached, it increases the affinity, then more of oxygen is getting attached. So this comes out to be a sigmoid curve. Okay. Now there are some factors jo is hemoglobin saturation of oxygen ko effect karte hai. And the mnemonic for this is CADET. Okay. CADET is CO2, A is acid, that is H plus ions, D is 2, 3, DPG, E stands for exercise and T is for temperature. And the cadet, all of these factors move this curve to the right. That is the right shift. Okay. Now see. If I increase the CO2 concentration, if I increase the acid or H plus concentration, if I increase the temperature, if I increase the 2,3-DPG, 2,3-DPG is nothing but it is a, an ionic molecule inside the RBCs which helps in dissociation of oxygen, okay? And association of CO2 with the hemoglobin. Ye carbon dioxide transport ko favor karta hai, theek hai? To DPG increases. All of this will decrease the oxygen binding to the hemoglobin. Now, how it how is it decreasing? See, if the curve was here normally, okay? Now, the curve is here. That means, for example, at this value this saturation the pressure should have been somewhere here okay now this same value of saturation the pressure is somewhere here 
so increased pressure is required for oxygen to bind to the hemoglobin and give us a particular saturation so this means the association between the hemoglobin and oxygen has decreased and the curve has shifted to the right and this is known as right shift so these all feature factors are responsible for the right shift of the curve or the decreased association of oxygen with hemoglobin or the increased dissociation okay now the opposite of it happens see here co2 very low acid very low temperature low dpg low so the ph is high so all of this what it does it increases the oxygen association with the hemoglobin and in turn shifts the curve towards the left side okay so this is oxygen dissociation curve now a very important term that is p50 p50 is the value of partial pressure of oxygen at which 50% hemoglobin is saturated okay jahan pe 50% of hemoglobin saturated hai us value of partial pressure of oxygen ko hum p50 kehte hain okay and it comes out to be 27 approximately it is 27 so at 27 mmhg of oxygen 50% of the hemoglobin is saturated okay also what is meth hemoglobin when carbon monoxide attaches to hemoglobin forms carboxy hemoglobin okay the hemoglobin here is oxidized and this hemoglobin is known as meth hemoglobin okay that is it is a very stable compound because carbon monoxide has very high affinity to hemoglobin more than oxygen 200 300 times more than oxygen okay it is a very stable compound now some important questions that have been asked and are very very important is 1 g of hb carries how much oxygen the volume has been asked 1 g of hemoglobin carries remember 1.34 ml of oxygen this is a question and has been asked so 100 ml of blood carry oxygen how much in 100 ml of blood you know 100 ml of blood the hemoglobin is approximately 15 g so 100 ml of blood is going to carry 1.34 into 15 that is approximately 20 ml okay so 100 ml of blood this is also a question and has been asked 100 ml of blood carries 20 ml of oxygen okay these two questions are very important so that's all for today i hope oxygen dissociation curve is clear to you all if you have any queries you can write them down in the comment section and i will be glad to help you out thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video till then keep studying